there's this there's this artist uh, James Blood Almer who has this great song called "Jazz is the Teacher, Funk is the Preacher, and One Without the Other You Have Nothing But the Blues," which is is really kind of true because I think for for drummers and I, it's probably true for any instrument I would say that it seems like jazz and classical music, but for drummers a lot more jazz and like Afro-Cuban music is the stuff that's really gonna stretch your limits and get you into a lot of independence and coordination that you aren't, I don't think you're gonna get just from rock drumming. My mom took me to see Buddy Rich when I was 10. And you know, and he used to go around billing himself as the world's greatest drummer. So, it, and it was arguable, like you'd leave the room and you go, oh my God, you know? And, and so that was sort of what I wanted to do. But as a result of going to Dave too, I saw, oh, you know, he had a picture of somebody different on the wall. So I went and looked into Belson and that led me to like, just the whole world of big band drumming. And um, who, uh, actually my favorite guy was, uh, for a while there, there's not many videos of him too. It's like early, it was like, I think it was Ellington's first guy. Who was Ellington's? Sonny Payne. Sonny Payne, yeah. There's some incredible videos of Sonny Payne playing, oh my <laughs> God. But, uh, so I discovered all, all that, um, uh, through Dave, but but I, I think I was always attracted to the drums. Like I, m I remember, oh, Ed Led Zeppelin was the re you know that was the reason. I mean, I, I heard When the Levee Breaks on the radio when I was you know a kid, and that was the f something about it, the articulation of that beat and the way it goes with the melody and the guitar. Line. Like you could kind of sing with a lot of Led Zeppelin songs, you could remember the drum part because they went along so well with the melody part. And uh, so, and and just everything was so bombastically clear, you know that. So it's like boom, ba, boom, 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 ba, you know, like you're not. There's no fudging that part, you know. There's no like, I, there's what, I, what's he quite doing in it? You know, actually, the thing was funny was that I, I, I didn't know anything about, you know, when you're eight years old, you don't know anything about echo or reverb, you know. So I'd go boom, 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 ba, 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 boom, 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 you know, like I'd actually play it that way. It wasn't until I was like 20 that I realized, you know, oh, that's, you know, but, um, but so I was learning Led Zeppelin drum parts when from, from like eight to like around 13, it was like all rock drum, you know, and I, got, I was really into Hendrix and Zeppelin and The Who and, and, um, and they're drummers kind of. I, I think I was a little bit of a closet guitar player too. Zappa, I, I like Zappa's drummers are an entire category for me. And you know, people say, well, who are your big influences? They go, well, this guy, this guy, this guy, and all Zappa's drummers. I got in Fish, and that was kind of a music school in itself. Um, and everybody's really committed to it. And our guitar player, Trey, is just a particularly gifted writer and, you know, just had a. a the, so there was a lot of ways in which I was forced to push boundaries. I feel like Fish is is a little extraordinary in the sense that as a band, we more by luck maybe, or just, I don't know, maybe it was the nature of the personalities, the way it worked out. We, we tended to kind of work on things we were bad at, which which isn't always the case. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of times people play to their their own strengths a lot more and and maybe as a result if they if they aren't going to a lot of jam sessions or taking lessons or being exposed to other a lot of other people who um challenge their 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 individual status quo wherever they're at with their instrument or whatever uh they might kind of get really good at sort of one thing and which isn't bad either i mean bb king did great with that you know what i mean it's 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 we used to always have that debate in Fish too. Like, if if we, if are we going to end up being this band that's sort of half acidly good at a bunch of stuff and not really good at any one thing, you know? Or or are you better off being like trying to just become the consummate blues artist or the consummate, you know, swing drummer or the consummate, you know, this style of music? Fish was unusual that we we did sort of push a lot of limits, and so I I think that I probably. I've gained a lot from 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 being in fish in, in that regard in terms of versatility. So much of what we did was based on listen. We had all these listening exercises, and all of it was. Uh, I know I'm talking a lot now, but normally my, when I'm playing with other people, it's like this gear shift that happens where I'm just completely listening. I'm trying not to mimic, but I'm I'm just I'm listening, and I and I love having that. 
that ability to, to play along with people in an improvisational situation. But at the same time, because I've only been in one band for 32 years, there are significant weaknesses that are exposed in situations like that too, which I think wouldn't exist if you were a really seasoned studio musician. Mm -hmm.